Hello everyone and welcome to the Steam Shop Update. This month we're going to talk about the oil conversion, a very fascinating topic that has a lot of people interested in how in the world did the Union Pacific successfully convert the 4014 to burn coal to oil. So if you'll bear with just a little bit of technical detail here and follow along with my flashlight, I'll explain what we did and how we made it work. So the basic concept of a steam locomotive is, is pretty simple. Uh, the 4000, like many steam locomotives developed, designed during the steam era, were designed and built to burn a single type of fuel, coal. Coal was very easily obtainable. Uh, it was a good fuel source for a steam locomotive, but it's a little bit dirty and it requires additional handling. So when you handle coal, you load the coal into the tender where the coal is crushed and delivered and everything before the railroad even gets it. So there's just multiple steps to that handling. It's, it's fed either by hand, what we call hand firing or hand bombing. It's kind of a slang term for a hand fired steam locomotive. And the bigger locomotives were just too big to permit a human being to develop or to deliver the amount of coal that the steam locomotive needed to produce the power. So stokers were developed. So what we've done is we take out all that apparatus, the stoker apparatus, the grates, the grate bearers, the intermediate grate bearers, and a lot of complex pieces to the underside of the firebox are present that we need to remove that we don't need anymore. And we simply create what we call a fire pan. And in this instance, it's three eighths thick plate steel, very heavily reinforced and designed to carry the very bottom part or contain what will become the oil burning apparatus. And the oil burning apparatus is a very simple system. It's a burner. In this case, the Union Pacific designed what's known as a Venturi casting. And the Venturi casting, as that name implies, it creates an airflow around the burner. It does two things. It provides additional combustion air into the firebox and also helps keep that burner cool. And the oil is controlled by the firing valve in the cab and that oil simply flows by gravity from the tender. So you've got an oil tank that's built in place of where the coal would have been. And oftentimes the railroads would interchange that that fuel source. So it wasn't that uncommon that they would go from coal to oil and then back to coal again. In the case of the 4005 that's been discussed and talked about in many different uh, books over the years, that locomotive had uh, a different arrangement than the one that we built here. So let's go back to that fire pan that I mentioned. So on the side of the firebox, you see a cover and that cover is covering up what we call our air tubes. And the air tubes are all part of a calculated amount of air that we want to go into the firebox. All of the air systems are not regulated, except for the damper that's controlled by the fireman. And that's a very on off or kind of halfway open type of an arrangement. Everything else is known as a demand system. So as the locomotive is working harder, it produces greater steam, which is greater exhaust pressure, which is greater pressure at the nozzle and that nozzle creates the vacuum in the front end, which then draws the air through the firebox, therefore increasing the amount of air that can be flowed or delivered into the fire. Firemen's controlling that uh, oil burner, controlling the amount of oil flowing by gravity, and it's atomized with steam pressure and it is burned. One of the key parts on an oil burning locomotive is the, the type of combustion, the quality of combustion, and that's 100% manually controlled by the crew, namely the fireman. So on an oil burning locomotive, ideally you want to see almost no smoke. That is the optimum rate of combustion that you are controlling as the steam locomotive is working. So if you see excessive smoke, the fireman is very, very quickly working to make adjustments to improve the combustion, thereby reducing that fuel, that, that burning of fuel. So when the locomotive is traveling down the track, we know this from experience, that if you have a degree of visible smoke that is actually unburned fuel that you're effectively wasting. So in the course of our day, if you've got additional smoke all day long, you could be wasting one to two or more gallons of oil per mile. 
That's why on our operations, our logistics are fairly tight and we wanna make sure and be as efficient as we can. So we've got the fire pan, we've got the damper, and on the damper, that's the very bottom part of the firebox that's controlled by the fireman. And that allows more air to combine with that fuel as it's being burned in the firebox. So we're making a, just a few adjustments. This particular oil arrangement that we've developed has been extremely successful. We're making some adjustments to the fire pan, to the uh, flash wall. That's a very large brick wall that absorbs some of that instantaneous heat that you can develop with an oil firing system. So we're making some adjustments on that. Other than that, the system has been extremely well. It's working very well for us and we're very pleased with the results. If you are not currently a member of the Union Pacific Steam Club, I would encourage you to consider joining our Steam Club. Steam Club members get the latest news and scheduling information about Union Pacific Steam Program by signing up with your email address, you'll get immediate notification of all UP844 and 4014 train schedules, tour stops, and other excursion-related activities. You'll also get exclusive news and updates about the UP Steam Program direct from the Cheyenne Steam Shop. Insider-only video access to UP Steam Giants from Railside and also from our shop floor. But that's not all. You'll also get a special invitation to join the UP Steam Club Facebook group where fans get in on the action by submitting their own photos, videos, and memories of the big boy and the living legend UP 844. You can also upload your favorite videos and photos of the 844 and the big boy, share your steam knowledge with your friends, and join the group discussion area. So we appreciate your support very much and thank you for watching.